Previously, we were in the pretty village of Mwang Nyoi in Laos. Now, we're heading further upriver to cross the border into Vietnam. very soon though and it'll all be good but yeah our time here in Mong Noi coming to an end we only have one more night in Laos how crazy how crazy is that anyway gonna go get up get down to get some breakfast um enjoy the view uh for the remaining time that we have here in the village and uh yeah got a five-ish hour boat ride today <laughs> okay, heading down to the boat pier. We're 15 minutes ahead of schedule. It's due to arrive at 9.30. Let's see. That's the boat to uh, Nong Nongyao. Uh, heading back. So a lot of people, they come up just to this village for a few nights and then they go back in the direction they started in. Whereas we're continuing up river to <laughs> Mongkwa. <laughs> It was our boat. A few others got on with us and soon we were off on our way to Mwang Kwa. <laughs> After about an hour, we came to a stop. So an unexpected stop. We've been just sort of yeah, led out here and told to go and look at a village for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> this journey might take a little longer than expected. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. Just paid 2,000 kits to go to the toilet. No idea where it is, but my goodness have I ended up in a beautiful spot. Hey buddy. 
Wow, this village is so beautiful and everyone's so lovely. We are really in the middle of nowhere. We thought we were in the middle of nowhere this morning, but my goodness, are we in the middle of nowhere now. It's very interesting. You just saw a sign there, um, or even now, <laughs> um, about the village being against slash and burn practices. The, the, the practice of basically, you know, clearing land by burning it. Um, and it's quite apt because perhaps you can't see, oh, maybe you can in this area, you can see the smoke. It's literally happening and there's like ash floating through the air. Yeah, I don't know whether the microphone's picking that up, but you can hear the woodland being burned, the clearing. After a short, unexpected excursion, we set off again, although not for long. Before 2015, it was possible to travel to Mwankwa all the way by boat. Now though, a massive hydroelectric dam blocks the way, and we now have to disembark and travel a short way around the dam by road. Two boats arrived at the same time, so they're off in the tuk-tuk to go around the dam. Meanwhile, we wait for that tuk-tuk to come back and pick us up. <laughs> kind of thinking that they're competition. Competition for hotel rooms at our final destination. And they've got the jump on us. As we are shuttled along the river, we catch a glimpse of the $1.4 billion dam that's blocking our way. Five minutes on the Sutek, get around the dam, and I think this is our boat behind me. Uh, yeah, got another three hours on the boat. <laughs> oh boy. One o'clock in the afternoon, still at the, well, sort of midway point, not really midway, still most of the journey left over, but yeah, kind of essential to have a very relaxed attitude uh, to travel when you're in Laos, not a lot going on really, everyone's just kind of waiting around, and no one really knows why. <laughs> After around 90 minutes of waiting around, we were invited to board and we were on our way again. We managed to snag some of the comfy seats right at the front. The scenery along this stretch was particularly pretty. Sadly though, we did see some communities that had succumbed to rising river levels caused by the hydroelectric dam. There were a couple occasions where we came to a stop, including one time when the driver needed to tinker with the engine at the back. Not what you want to see when you're so remote. Thankfully, the stops were brief.
Around three hours later, our final destination came into view, the town of Mwangkwa. Okay, and we've arrived. It's been a longer travel day than I think we both expected, but that's Laos for you. Just climbing uphill from the boat pier to try and find a room for the night. Because, uh, try as we might, nowhere seem to have anything online, so we're just going to walk in. Thankfully though, the benefit of that is that the price should be really good. Yes. Very nice. So, oh, what a what a view! <laughs> you can actually see the coconut trees and stuff up there. <laughs> but hey, look at this! We've got coffee and water for free, telly, air conditioner. And two towels each. Got hand two towels. towels, a fridge. <laughs> we haven't had a fridge for a while. No, just like it. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very Thank nice. you. We come up and pay in a minute. Yeah. Pay. Okay. <laughs> This is how much is this again? Five pounds. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's a hot water heater. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, how cute. Oh, feet towel. Yeah, feet towel. Just a towel for your feet. That's <laughs> cute. Ah, oh, fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we have been to where we think the bus will leave tomorrow for Vietnam. Um, as you've just pointed out, it's very competitive this travel, Malaki. You know, we kind of raced to get a hotel room and we've raced to, to get the bus tomorrow, but needs must. We, we got places to be. Anyway, we have come to, we think, the town's only really main tourist attraction, this awesome suspension bridge. Look at that. A little bit bouncy, a little bit rickety. <laughs> Big old holes in the ground. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, I've thinned out, put another plank over the top. Look at this. Oh dear. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Our last meal in Laos was at Sabadi Restaurant. How was the food, JD? Oh, amazing. So flavorful. Mm. And the cocktails are pretty good. Yeah, one pound cocktails. Can't complain. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, 7am, on our way to see whether the ticket man has any tickets for us for the bus to Vietnam. There's a bus. It says Vietnam Lao on it. Oh, fingers crossed. Hmm, let's see. Oh, it's an old, old bus. 
we were a tad nervous that there might not be enough room for us. But thankfully, we secured the last two seats. Other passengers weren't quite so lucky. It takes around 90 minutes to get to the Laos border control post. There we go, stamped out of Laos. Uh, now we just need to drive across to the Vietnamese side, all very easy, no money needed. Uh, they do have a look at your Vietnam visa as well, just to make sure that you have it before sending you across. So yeah, all very easy. We cross the border into Vietnam, and then five minutes later, we arrive at their control post to have our passports and visa checked. And we're through, and we're in Vietnam. Um, all very easy again. Again, no money having to be exchanged. So yeah, really slick and just one hour to go on the bus. Great. Once in Vietnam, the mood on the bus changed completely. Our driver, who had been quiet up until now, cranked up the music to 11 and acquired an immediate urge to share how full his bus was with his mates. I think this is how we're going to die. By the time we arrived at Dien Bien Phu, our driver seemed to have connected the horn to the accelerator pedal and was keen to ensure it was working. Needless to say, it was. And off the bus and we're here, much quicker than I was expecting. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling really fresh as well. I'm now leading a group of other travellers to our hotel. My maps aren't working, but I think I've remembered where it is. Okay, so we've arrived at our hotel <laughs> and uh, we've ended up with a, a family room. So two double beds <laughs> and so much room and a little, a little dressing table area, telly, fridge, and then, oh my goodness, the bathroom is huge and a shower screen and a rain shower. And what's the view like? Yeah, it's sitting, you can see the mountains as well. Lovely, 14 pounds a night, can't complain. And we're here at, it's quarter past 12. I was honestly expecting to be arriving in this town at like five o'clock in the afternoon. So the whole journey has been really good. So an earlier than expected arrival means we have some time in Dien Bien Phu. Uh, and we, that gives us an opportunity to go through and do all the essential things when you arrive in a country. Eat, get money, get a SIM card. So let's do those things. So 
we've had a bit of trouble. Well, no, actually, we haven't had any trouble. We got a SIM card that was very easy. Buy, but for unlimited data for 30 days, brilliant. We've had trouble of getting a bit of food because the only pin on Happy Cow, uh, there is only one in this town and the place is shut. Um, so we tried to find another place and this is where we've ended up. They opened it just for us because um, Matt went to a hotel to see if they could, we couldn't find it um, based on where Google Maps said it was, a vegetarian restaurant. So they rung them up um, and then we walked down and then they opened the shutters. Now, yeah, after use Google Trans Translate yep. um, to translate the menus and we're getting some fun. Yay! As we used to call it, fun. So. <laughs> yeah, so uh, exciting. And we're drinking some unknown fluids. No idea what that is. Some kind of She's bought some bananas and some, some of these guys. But yeah, look at this place. Is it a house? Is it a shop? Is it a restaurant? Who knows? But they're very nice. Food has arrived. Mmm, mmm. Delicious. That was such a lovely experience. Oh god, they just kept giving us tea and they brought out hot, freshly roasted chestnuts yeah. at the end and was just peeling them for us. But eating them with us as well, so yeah. it's like we were like a family meal. It was really nice. Oh, so nice. And it, what, it cost us two quid. Oh, wonderful. What a lo lovely way to start our visit to Vietnam. Sorry, I've got, oh, got a bit of windy pop. Sorry about that. Thank you for joining us on our trip through Laos, a beautiful country full of gentle, friendly people. Next up on our overland adventure in Southeast Asia, we travel north to south on our first visit to Vietnam. Hit subscribe now and join us on our travels.